This is the solution guide to the second worksheet covering biology science passages typically found on the science section of the ACT exam. The first passage on this biology worksheet is a passage about the influenza virus. The passage begins to tell us when the flu virus or the influenza virus was discovered, how it is spread, the different strains of the flu virus or the influenza virus, and how the flu is still responsible for deaths in some of the undeveloped countries of the world. Then the passage goes on to discuss two different studies of infection rates of the influenza virus. The first study is a month-by-month -month count of people reportedly infected with the influenza virus. These are people that actually went to the doctor, the clinics, or the hospitals because they had the flu. The passage goes on to say that as many as five times as many people may actually have been infected because people in developed countries don't necessarily go to the doctor or the hospital when they have the flu. Study two gives us infection rates for five different cities in Mexico. And instead of reporting infection rates for every month of the year, like they did in study one, they instead report infection rates only for the months of June and January. They do this because June is supposed to represent the summer. And January is supposed to represent the winter. You'll notice from figure two that a lot more people end up with the influenza virus or a lot more people end up with the flu in the winter months than they do in the summer months. Now if you go back to figure one, this may seem counterintuitive until you realize that these months, May, June, July, August, September, these are the winter months in Australia because Australia is in the southern hemisphere. So in Australia, more people get sick with the flu in the winter time than they do in the summer, just like in Mexico. Now with all of this information, let's go see if we can answer the questions that accompany this passage. The first question on this worksheet states that researchers at the World Health Organization estimate that for every person infected with the influenza virus in a developed country, there are 350 more people at risk for contracting the virus. Given the results of study one, how many people would have been at risk for becoming infected with the influenza virus in Australia in June of 2010? Well, we're in Australia, and they tell us it's going to be in study one. So let's look at the information provided with the first study in our passage. We're asked about the influenza virus in Australia in June 2010. So we're looking at this column in our graph. And according to this column in our graph, there were 500 people reportedly infected with the flu. So if we take these 500 people and we say that each one of them could possibly infect 350 more, then we take 500 and multiply it by 350. If we do this, this will come out to be 175,000 people. Which is answer C? You may have also read in the passage of study one that they suggest that these numbers are way underreported. In the passage accompanying study one, they say that they would expect five times more people to actually have the flu than are reported in this graph. However, if you take the 500 people reported in this graph and you multiply it by five, so you have 2,500 people, and then if you assume all 2,500 people infect 350 more, you'll end up with a much bigger number. 875,000. You'll notice that this is not one of our possible answers. But 175,000 is, so let's select that one and say that C is our best answer. Now let's look at the second question. 
The comparison of reported influenza infections in Mexico in 2008, as indicated in Figure 2, shows that relative to the number of people in Mexico City infected with the flu in January, the number of people infected with the flu in Guadalajara in June was approximately A, half as much, B, one-fifth as much, C, twice as much, or D, five times as much. Well, to get our answer, let's go look at Figure 2. So looking at Figure 2, we're asked to compare the number of people in Mexico City infected in January. So Mexico City is these first two columns. January is the red bar. And this number appears to be approximately 420. And we want to compare this number to the number of people infected with the flu in Guadalajara in June, which would be this blue column right here, and that appears to be about 80. So there are 420 people compared to 80. If you actually do this division, this is about 5 and 1 quarter to 1. The closest answer we have to 5 and 1 quarter to 1 is D, five times as much. There are roughly five times more people sick in January in Mexico City than there are in June in Guadalajara. Question three on the worksheet tells us that according to the data in figure one, the greatest increase in reported influenza infections in Australia occurred between which two months? Well, let's go look at figure one, and we're looking for the largest jump, or the largest increase. And this is from one bar to another. Now this is a pretty big jump here, but this is actually a decrease. We're looking for an increase. And the biggest increase I can see is probably this one here, between May and June. So our best answer, is answer B. Problem four states, one factor that may play a role in the transmission of the influenza virus is that cold temperatures lead to drier air, which may dehydrate mucus, preventing the body from expelling the virus effectively. Would the presence of dry air directly affect the transmission of the virus? A, yes, because the influenza virus is typically transmitted as an aerosol. Yes, because the influenza virus is typically transmitted through touch. No, because the influenza virus is typically transmitted as an aerosol. Or D, no, because the influenza virus is typically transmitted through touch. Well, the passage starts off telling us that cold temperatures leads to drier air. Would the presence of dry air directly affect the transmission of the virus? Well, looking at the data, if cold temperature leads to drier air, and we know that there are more influenza infections in the winter time when it's cold outside, it seems pretty obvious that if cold temperatures lead to drier air and there's more influenza infections when it's cold, then dry air would affect the transmission of the virus. So we can eliminate C and D just because we know there are more people getting infected in the winter. Now we have to choose between A and B. Is this because it's transmitted as an aerosol or because it's transmitted through touch? Well, in the very first paragraph of the passage, it says the virus is typically spread through air by coughs or sneezes that create aerosols of the virus and can survive longer on cool surfaces. So our best answer is answer A. Question five states, which of the following hypothesis was most likely tested in study two? A, the number of reported cases of influenza infections in Mexico is greatest during the winter and least during the summer. B, the number of reported cases and influenza infections vary significantly between Mexico and Australia. C. Influenza infections affect significantly more people in certain cities in Mexico than in other cities. 
or D, most cases of influenza infections are not reported to medical authorities in Mexico. Well, let's go back to study two. And the study tells us that it believes that the influenza virus is most prevalent during the winter months of the climate. So the analysis was taken in the months of January and June because January is the winter and June is the summer. And they went to the five largest cities in Mexico. So they didn't pick the largest city and the smallest city to find the difference between. They went to the five largest cities. So because they picked five cities that are relatively similar, I would argue that C must be incorrect. If they thought that it would infect more people in certain cities than in others, you would suspect that they would pick the more developed cities and then the less developed cities instead of the four most populous ones. B says they want to report the cases of influenza infections between Mexico and Australia. Now that's the point of this passage maybe, but not the point of study two. Study two only cares about the flu virus in Mexico. So B must be incorrect. And D, most cases of influenza infections are not reported to medical authorities in Mexico. Well, they don't really talk about this in study two. They do mention it in study one, but not in study two. So I'm gonna say D must be incorrect. And A is our best answer. Now, the number of reported cases of influenza infections in Mexico is the greatest during the winter and least during the summer. Well, they only tested one winter month and one summer month. So I would say A is pretty reasonable and it's our best answer. So for question five, choose A. And now for the final question about this passage, question six. Given the information in figure two, which of the following might explain the difference in reported cases of influenza infections in major Mexican cities between January and June of 2008? A, the influenza virus can survive longer on cool surfaces and the air temperature in June is often warmer than in January. B, those diagnosed with the influenza virus in January are able to recover by June. C, the influenza virus can survive longer on cooler surfaces and the air temperature in June is often cooler than in January. Or D, the influenza virus often affects more people in Mexico during the summer season than during the winter season. Well again, let's go back to study two. We know June is the summer and January is the winter. There are more people getting infected in January or more people getting infected during the winter. So that right away makes D incorrect. The air temperature in June is often cooler than in January. Well, we know in Mexico, that's not the case either. So C must be incorrect. And we're stuck again between A and B. Those diagnosed with the influenza virus in January are able to recover by June or the influenza virus can survive longer on cooler surfaces and the air temperature in June is often warmer than January. Well, since this is talking about infection rates and not recovery rates, I'm gonna say that A is a better answer than B. B is about recovering from the flu and A is about how there are more people infected in January than in June. Since A seems to better describe the point of this study, I'm gonna choose A as my best answer.